in this video, we're going to lay the groundwork to build our DNA center. Now, as such, that means that we're going to need to modify some of the Proxmox configuration. So we're going to have to create a bridge domain or a bridge that we're going to use for our DNAC as well as we need to configure gigabit or Ethernet 1 on our VIOS router. So let's go ahead and see if we can't get that part of the implementation done. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to navigate over to PVE1. And from PVE1, I'm going to go to Networks. And I'm going to go to Create. And I want to create a new VLAN bridge. We'll go ahead and name it uh, VMBR1. I'm going to give it a comment of Shared services. So this is going to be the virtual network that I want to use that's going to interconnect my DNAC identity services engine and Ethernet 1 on my VIOS router. So with this, what we're going to see is I am now going to want to select this and we'll see here that I have the VM bridge 1 is active and it's auto start, and right now it's not VLAN aware, which is perfectly fine for what I'm doing. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to navigate back over to my core router. I'm going to go to that second interface, and I'm going to edit it, and I want to change it from VMBR0 to VMBR1. So now we have that interface. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and configure this device. So we'll log in VIOS, VIOS. And what I want to do is I want to configure the second Ethernet. So VIOS, VIOS. I must have fat fingered it. There we go. So I'm going to type config. And I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm going to set interface Ethernet ETH1 with an address. And the address that I'm going to apply is going to be 10.1.255.1 slash 24. I'm going to go ahead and up arrow, and then I'm going to say Ethernet 1. The description is going to end up being shared services. Yeah, fix that. Services. All right, so now I'm going to say commit and save. Now, the next part of this is going to be really interesting because what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to configure NAT. So, I mean, after all, this is a router. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say set NAT source, and I'm going to define a rule. We'll call it rule 10. And the outbound interface is going to end up being Ethernet 0. So that's the interface that I want to use. The other thing is, is I'm going to go ahead and say, I want to set NAT source, and I want to make a modification, rule 10, still the same rule. And in this instance, I'm going to say translation address masquerade. So we're building a full NAT cone in this infrastructure. So now all I'm going to do is say set NAT source rule. I'll go ahead and say description, uh, 100 description, no, 10 description. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and say, this is going to be my NATID interface config. All right. So now that we've got that, one of the things I want to do here is I want to make certain that I've got all of the baseline configuration in place. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and say compare commands. And we are looking at uh, what's going to get applied at the time we type commit. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say commit and save. Again, we want it to survive a restart. So the object of the exercise here is just now, can I type ping like 8.8.8.8? And we know that we can. Can I type ping 8.8.8? And let's see, I want to... Hmm. 
And see, since traffic is being generated on the device, it's not going to trip that. So this is going to end up being a verification that we end up doing after we build the DNAC. So fundamentally, all I've done is I have gone to the core router and I have placed it into the proper virtual machine bridge. I've given it an IP address. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to start looking at what's going to be involved in building the DNAC. Now, this begs the question, what kind of DNAC do we want to build? So if we're using virtual devices, so virtual 9Ks, C9Ks, then we're going to need to use one of the newer DNACs, like, D, like for instance, 2377. Uh, if we, or 2375, uh, there, there are a number of different versions. If we're going to be a, using physical switches, we are going to want to use 2337 since it's going to be closer to what we have in the real lab. So initially what I plan on doing is I'm going to go ahead and set up the configuration for 2377. So that means I need to find that image if I have it on my desktop. So let's take a look. So I guess the first thing that I could do is I could navigate over to PVE1. I want to take a look at uh, my file storage. Let's upload and let's see if I can find that image. So I am looking specifically for, let's go uh, to, to me and... I want to see, do I have a two, three, seven image? So I have a two, three, seven, three image. ISO, and that's the one that I'm going to use. Let's go ahead and upload this. And it's going to take its own sweet time. Like I said, it's 37 or 35 gigs. All right, so we can see that we have the ISO image. Now, I'm going to want the latest and greatest, so I'm going to have to update it. But uh, somewhere around here, I have 2377. But again, this is going to be a good exercise. So now that we've got the ISO image, we need to cre create the virtual machine. So I'm going to go back up to PV1. I'm going to go ahead and say create my VM. And I'm going to go ahead and call this my DNA C2377. Seven, because that's ultimately where it's going to end up going. So from this scenario, I want to point to the ISO image. We'll go ahead and leave the Linux kernel configs the way they are. I'm not worried about the graphic cards. I am going to do the QEMU agent. And I need a big hard drive. So I'm going to go to 600 gigs of storage for my hard drive. And for my CPU, I'm going to go ahead and put in 40 cores with single sockets. We'll go ahead and leave the type as is. The memory is going to have to get changed to 100. And let's see, we'll, we're going to, we'll do... This is going to end up being in megs. So we'll do 100, 160, 1, 2, 3. So let's go ahead and say next. And as far as my interface, I'm going to be using VMBR1, which is the only interface I currently have at this time. Obviously, we may change that. And let's go ahead and see what the machine ends up looking like. So waiting for it to resolve its name. Every once in a while, I'll refresh it. All right, so it knows its name. So I've got 156.25 gig. I could be exact about that. I'm not going to worry about it. We have the bootable image, so and we have a single network. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing fired up. Jump over to console, and we're going to do the install. So we'll walk through. And again, this is going to take forever. I apologize for that, but there's just no way around it. So let's see what happens. Now, I intend to build a 2337 to show how to use physical interfaces to connect out. Let's see here. That's pretty sketchy as far as the visibility. Let's see. 
if I can't pop that out so we can see a little bit better. Now, this unfortunately is going to end up being a test as to whether or not I got my NAT configuration straight. And I will give you guys copy and paste configurations to apply to that VIOS router. And again, that VIOS router will not be permanent. It's just that I need a device that is going to allow me to be able to assign my IP address to my DNAC and then get the DNAC patched and uploaded and working. And then we can switch it over for, say, for instance, a different way out that we'll probably end up building a router inside of the SD-WAN. So, so when we build the SD-WAN, we'll probably use the internet router for that. So validating the disk throughput. Now, it's not uncommon for that to fail, especially if you don't use the uh, disk card and the uh, QEMU agent. But here we go. Let's go ahead and start a Cisco data center cluster field. It's going to be a cluster of one device. All right, and our install begins. So it's going to end up being next. Next. I'm going to use 10.1.255. In this case, I am going to end up using 11. So the IP address of the DNA center is going to change. 255.255.255.0. 10.1.255.1. The DNS servers are going to end up being 8.8.8.8 because I need real resolvers. And this will be my cluster link since it's my only interface. Let's go ahead and say proceed. It should test the network. And if I got my configuration on my VAS router right, it should work. So uh, we're not going to use a cluster address since I'm not building a cluster. Those are optional. 1234QWER, where QW is capitalized. I'll repeat that. And I'll use the same password for the admin. Next. NTP servers will be time.google.com. Let's see if it can communicate to those. Yep, it can see. So, yeah, I got the NAT configuration correct. I'm not going to do uh, any... Um, IPsec on the cluster, the intercluster, since there's not really a cluster. Let's go ahead and say proceed. It should test NTP, configure it. Actually, it's already tested. It should configure it. And then ultimately, it should start applying our configuration and communicating to the outside world. Now, the problem is, is I'm going to have to let this thing run for several hours. And I'm not going to sit here and monitor it, obviously. So uh, the object of the exercise is to see it get to a point where it is going to end up being configuring. And then what we're going to end up doing is we're going to come back to it once it's done. So um, and then we'll end up having to patch it and upgrade it. But like I said, this is a process. If you can get your hands on uh, 2377, uh, the ISO, uh, that's fine. If you want to do your configuration using the OVA, I can walk you through that process as well. But right now, um, I'm just focusing on ISO images because it's easier for everybody to work with because we don't have to convert from, if you get an OVA, you got to unpack it, you got to tar it, and then you've got to um, convert the VMDK images to QCAL2 images. It's just, it's a process. I'll show you guys how to do it just in case somebody wants to. But right now, my primary focus is to get at least one end-to-end -end walkthrough on getting the lab built out. So let's go ahead and just let this run. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording here, and then we'll come back when everything is done. So um, it's just going to do a time skip. So we're going to get to the point to where we can access it. Then I'll access it. Then I'll start the upgrades, and then we'll end up having to pause again. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right here, and I will see everybody once it's done. Just so everyone knows, the system has been running for. Well, pretty much all night. Between us, I basically stopped recording last night, took the family out to eat, had a couple of margaritas, and came back. I really think that should be part of any of our installation processes that take this long. So where we are now is going to be the step where we need to access the DNA center. And in order to be able to do that, we're going to need a tool that's going to allow us to 
integrate with the resources that we're building part of the shared services environment. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and install an Ubuntu Linux host inside of this lab. If you want, you could install a Windows machine. I don't want to futz around with it. I just simply want to get something up and operational that I can interact with in order to be able to start the final stages of installing the applications and upgrading the Catalyst Center, aka the DNA Center. So that's going to be where we're going to pick up in the next video. So we're going to go ahead and go through the process of onboarding and setting up an Ubuntu host inside of our Proxmox installation. I'll see everyone in that video.